This is my Webley Mastiff, Mastiff 12 with uh, 12 shot magazines and also single shot. And I'll be showing you today how to take apart the Mastiff and power tune it. Because this is a rifle that is uh, in uh, FAC version and the non-FAC version for the, for the UK. Uh, but as I don't live in the UK, I can adjust the power and uh, to make a kind of a extra FAC. It's shooting about uh, 700 feet per second uh, with uh, power drivers, and I want to just uh, just have something more oomph. So let me show it, show you how it's done. These are the pellets we'll be shooting. These are the uh, Prometheus pile drivers. Let's see if we can get that in focus. These are way better than HN does them now. But then again, it's, uh, well, HN has taken Prometheus over, so now we've only got the pile drivers from HN. But these are the pellets, 30 grain in 2-2. Two two. Well, okay, we need to disassemble the stock first of course so the way it's done is right underneath here there's this brass insert let's see if it focuses see this brass insert here and underneath that there's a there's a, a bolt. So we need to take that apart first. You need to wiggle it until you find it. There it is. It's locked in. loose. You can just leave it in there. It won't fall out. And you can slide out. Wait a minute, I've got something. Need a trigger guard. Trigger needs to be Released. Trigger shoe. Let's, let's see. It's this way. So 
Now this is the screw. Let's see where the focus is. Oh, one focus. Okay, this is the screw. Just taken out of, of this hole here. That part. Now you can slide the trigger off. Trigger shoe, trigger blade, whatever you call it. Okay, it's the trigger blade off. That's this one. And now we can slide it, slide the block out of the out of the stock, like this. Start away. There's the action block. Get the uh, scope off as well. This is the block, block, the action block, the safety switch, the, uh, the, the trigger pull for the semi bolt up, of course. Yeah, the uh, trigger sears, just to uh, polish them up. And here's the hammer. What we need to do now is remove the cylinder and uh, the barrel and the barrel band and this barrel band in here as well. The way you can do that is just pull out this cap, this fill cap. You can pull it out. Yeah, we've got the uh, manometer there, the place for the fill probe, and the barrel bend. We can uh, loosen that up now. I can slide off or wiggle off the barrel band. Now we need to slide off this frame. So this uh, complete uh, weaver rail is a complete frame with the trigger in place. So we need to loosen the trigger nut, which is over here. We zoom in. That's a small nut over there. Which is, I believe, a 5mm. And we need to remove or loosen this screw here.
Now this is this can be wiggled free, and of course the uh, the extension rod for the trigger is free as well. And just slide that off. Just be careful not to scratch anything. There you go. So this is the frame. With the uh, with the trigger. Now we can remove the barrel band with the uh, the shroud. So you can just release this, this front screw. There you go. And just twist the uh, the the shroud off. Which will release it. From the uh, from the block here. What are you looking at? I am looking at the future of our two companies, and it looks very now it's free. You can slide it off. Just for a brief second. So Anyone you've got the uh, shroud here. Now you can see the sign and support. Now this is part of the uh, of the silencer or shroud. This is where your barrel ends. And these are uh, some uh, air ports. Uh, this is the uh, this is O-ring with an air stripper. Another O ring. What you need to do is remove the barrel, and it's on the uh, on the block on the top. There are two Allen bolts which you need to remove. This one needs to go out completely. You can just release a bit. And it doesn't have to go out completely. Just give it a couple of turns. This way, the barrel can be pulled out. Just give it a wiggle. Just give it a little bit of a turn. Just slides out. So sorry about last night. I know it was a this is where you can see the barrel transfer port. And that one with the uh, two O rings and the barrel locating uh, holes for the uh, for the grub screws. And this is the barrel breach. So now the barrel is out. We can now remove the uh, the air cylinder. Same process. Add two grub screws in here, Allen bolts, and just uh, release them. Make sure you've got no air in this reservoir. So 
So just remove these grub screws. Or loosen them up at least. Okay, and now you can just slide out the air cylinder and this is the valve unit with the valve stem with hammer strikes and this is the valve transfer port and this is the burst disc but we need to do something with this transfer port also with the transfer port in the block which is underneath this one and the transfer port in the, the barrel itself which is that one we need to enlarge those three So let's measure the transfer port now. Let's see, the barrel transfer port is... ...3.77. The transfer port of the air cylinder Three point six. Well, the transfer port in the uh, in the barrel block, the action block. We don't know at this moment, but I guess it's uh, it's about the same as well. So I think it's. Uh, well, we can at least increase it to four. Maybe four and a half. Let's see what power we get. Well, so just with a four mil drill, we will drill out this uh, barrel transfer transfer port. The, uh, the action block transfer port and the transfer port of the air cylinder. The barrel block you can simply drill it out by cocking back the hammer and just drill out from here right into well this port is already large so we don't need to do anything with that so this we can find out there's no need to increase the uh, transfer port from the from the block itself because it's uh, well as far as I can feel maybe about four and a half maybe five mil so there's no need for the barrel block to be drilled out. So only the the, the barrel and the transfer port on the uh, air cylinder. Make sure when you drill out the transfer port that you deburr it on the inside as well as on the outside so that pellets won't clip. So I'll be right back. Well, okay, just uh, drilled out the uh, the barrel transfer port. And it's four mil now. As you can almost see, 
minutes. Oh, 3.9, it's almost 4. There we go. So the is uh, 4.0. Deep bird as well. So what we need to do now is the transfer part of the air reservoir. What we need to do is uh, separate this part, this valve uh, stem, from the cylinder itself. So the way we do that is. Uh, So you can put a spanner on this one here. Let me get that. Well, the spanner we need is a 13 mil. And just put it on the end of the valve stem. Hold the air cylinder in place and give it a twist. You can see the air cylinder stripping from the uh, from the uh, valve stem. Okay, the O-ring is out now, so we can easily. Screw this out. And there we have it. So this is the uh, the valve assembly itself. And with the transfer port, valve stem, burst disc, uh, the grab uh, screw hold for the. Uh, to fix this to the barrel block and here you see another uh, plate with a small hole in there we need to uh, separate this from the assembly itself so you can easily do that just hold it there and screw it might need the spanner, but this one is pretty loose. There we go. And in here you have a spring which connects to the to the uh, the valve itself. On the valve you have the uh, little O-ring. And a pressure plate thing. So the hammer strikes this one, and it will release the the pressure plate from the uh, the inside of the valve assembly. And the O-ring will keep air from going through the uh, back to the hammer. So now this is the the valve body. The stem has been removed. There's nothing inside there, as you see. So now we can drill out this uh, transfer port to the four mil, as we've just done with the uh, with the barrel itself. Well, that was easily done. So this one is four mil as well, probably, hopefully. See, it's four mil as well. So we can assemble the uh, the valve body again. Be right back. Well, now the uh, the valve body is uh, drilled out to four mil. 
just have a look if, if there are no burrs inside just uh, take a take a flashlight or whatever and just look inside it's all clear nice and clear so no deburr needed on the inside the outside it's it's nice and flat as well always make sure you have a, a sharp drill bit so you uh, you minimize the chance of uh, of burying it now we have to assemble the, uh, the valve body as well so we've got the uh, valve spring and the valve stem you slide that in and it will exit there it is you've got the valve stem here's the spring now you have to put the uh, this one back to keep the tension on what we can do is drill this one out as well just to increase airflow that's what I'm going to do now I think it is at this moment might be 2, 3 mil, 2.8, 2.9 mil, I think we need to increase that as well. We'll do it all the same with the 4 mil now. Be right back. Okay, this one is drilled out to 4 mil as well. As you can see, It's nicely deburred, although there's no real need to deburr it, but you know, it's uh, just an optical thing. Make sure it is completely clean, there's no metal flakes or whatever, because that can travel into the, uh, uh, into the valve itself and it, it will give you leaks and you don't want that. Okay, now just assemble this just in reverse order. Just uh, put the, uh, the spring in there and close this nut. Just hand tighten, it's, it's good enough. So now it's the valve stem again. transfer port and there we go this one can go back into the air cylinder so we've got the o-ring here it's always good to have a kind of a, a lubricant no petroleum based but just uh, just to uh, to give it a nice flush finish I've got the uh, this gun oil, and it's uh, pretty good stuff. So just give it a dab. So that was enough. Just spread it over the entire oven. So it's nicely lubricated. And put it back on the air cylinder. So, this is the air cylinder. That's the camera, there it is. I just put it in. Make sure not to cross thread this. And tight is enough. And there it is, the complete assembly. No, 
can reinstall everything just in reverse order as we did uh, disassembling it. So just get the uh, the action block and the uh, the air cylinder. Make sure that the uh, the transfer port is facing down and the two grub screw markers are facing up. They need to be aligned with these two holes in the action block. So again, just a little a little bit of grease on the two O-rings. And slide this in. Be careful not to completely damage the, uh, the O rings. Make sure it's completely seated. And now you can see the. Uh, make sure the, uh, the grub screw. Uh, indentation in the air cylinders are aligned with the uh, two holes. So you can just see that. Maybe. No, not really. Maybe with the light on. So you can see the grub screw holes there aligned with the air cylinder. It's completely seated. Get the uh, small rub screws. And tighten these up. Don't over tighten, just just give it a bit of a twist. So the air cylinder is assembled with the action block. And now we need to uh, assemble the uh, the barrel. So again some lubricant for the, uh, for the barrel overings. And the uh, transfer port of the barrel needs to be facing down from the block of course. And the grub screw fittings up for these grub screws to fit in. So just put it in, twist it a little so I've got a seat. There you go, seat it. Let's see if the grub screws holes are aligned. Uh, 
and tightening the grub screws from the barrel. And the large one. Just give them a little twist as well. There we go. So the barrel's in place. We can put back the, uh, the shroud. So we've got the uh, silencer part of the shroud. Screw them back on the, uh, the barrel. Tight. So it is on. Another drop off. For the, uh, for the O-rings and place the, the shroud tube back on. You can see in the shroud, I can get that out, there is felt with a metal insert. We've got a, got a metal insert here and a felt strip. Let's get that out. Slide the uh, barrel band over the barrel all the way up the action and screw it on. And just give it a twist so it can just flush and nice and tight. And now the we've got the, the felt strip and this metal perforated piece. Just enclose it and put it back into the shroud until it cannot slide any further. So put it in. So it stops there. Get the uh, the end of the shroud. Thread a piece and put it back on. Uh, just snug fit, and there we are. So put the uh, put the frame back over the barrel, over the fill port, over the air cylinder, and slowly slide it, slide it upwards, making sure for the last, uh, for the last piece, 
at the barrel extender or the uh, trigger extender can fit into this this hole here of the sear. So there we go. So let's see to the way. And tighten it all the way. Nice and tight. Don't over tighten, but nice and tight will do. Now you can see the The trigger blade and the extended rod, the trigger rod, is fitting nice into this this sear here. And we can put back the uh, small uh, bolt head on this one. Let's put it back to that. This way you can adjust your trigger as well. So mine was adjusted, but I have to readjust it now. I just adjusted that the with the safety on. There's no movement in the trigger itself, so there's movement now. I've adjusted it that it's completely flush there when the safety is on. So it's tight, it doesn't, it doesn't really move. Safety still engages. And the triggers might well, just be a little bit tighter. Okay, that's good enough. Okay, now that's assembled. And now we can put down put the the barrel band on. Just give it a wiggle again. Make sure everything is aligned.
if it's not aligned properly just loosen this screw again and just give it a look over to see that the uh, the barrel is aligned with the uh, with the air cylinder and the weaver rail is all nice nice one continuous line then tighten the screw again just keep everything nice in line and you don't get a warp barrel So nice aligned now and just tighten the, uh, the barrel bend screws. Okay, give it again, give it a once over. Everything is nicely aligned. So it's all centered. Now we can put the stock back on, put the fill cap back on. Um, put the stock back on and uh, we'll see you for the uh, when I've done that and we can have a test shoot just see what kind of power we have now seven seventy five. what it was before but I think it's about an increase of 50 50 feet per second okay let's calculate this the first time without the uh, well before we drilled the uh, we enlarged the uh, uh, the transfer port we had 711 foot per second the pellet is uh, 30 grain calculate so we had uh, 45.6 joules or 33.7 uh, foot pounds uh, but now we had 700 and 75 so we're at uh, 40 foot pounds or uh, uh, 54.26 joules so that's an increase of, uh, of about 8 joules or 7 foot pounds so just to uh, just by enlarging the uh, the transfer port from uh, 3.6 to 4 millimeters so that's the result guys, thanks.